Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, and huge welcome. Uh, I am Alex Beller. I'm super excited to welcome you all to Postscript's summer product event, The Text Factor. Now, as we always do here, we're going to keep things tight and substantive, but it's going to be great. So I'm Alex Beller. I'm your host. I'm one of the co-founders, and I'm the president of Postscript. And I want to just, first of all, thank everyone for joining us today. We're going to pack a ton into the next 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of substantive, important product updates, some ways for you to increase your SMS results, and a big surprise. So if you're ready, let's go. So first, actually today, I'm going to introduce you to a few of our speakers. Sid Patella is a product manager here at Postscript and is an expert around all of our acquisition and list growth features. Rally Stanova is a longtime Postscript team member. Uh, and in fact, we were just reminiscing backstage. Uh, there's hundreds of people on this webinar today and um, Rally was on the team back when there was just a couple people showing up to Postscript webinar, which is great. Now, Rally is a senior product marketing manager who covers our newly released SMS sales product. And so between us, we're gonna cover three things today. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the SMS subscriber life cycle, right? We're all about SMS. We've been thinking a lot and continue to develop our framework and strategy that we recommend folks take. And not only are we gonna share thinking around this new framework, but we're going to use it in a way to highlight our product updates and share how you should be using them so that Postscript can help you maximize your SMS revenue. The second is exactly what I mentioned before. Right, we're going to cover a bunch of product updates that we want to get in front of you so you can start using them to make more money. At this point, Sid and Rally will cover just how valuable these releases can be at each stage of the SMS subscriber lifecycle I'm going to talk about. And the third thing we're going to do today, well, the third is a big surprise announcement. And I know you're going to really like it. It's huge news for all our customers. So make sure you hang on with us until the end. So, before we get after that, I want to pause and remind you that here at Postscript, we are all in on SMS. It's what we eat, breathe, and sleep. It is all we do. Now, there are people out there in the market who claim that SMS is very similar to email. They want you to use an all-in-one tool. They want to give blanket strategies for SMS and email, right? Because they believe that, that's, that a more brand-specific, tailored approach won't actually improve results. What I'm here to tell you is that a Postscript we fundamentally reject that idea. SMS deserves its own focus and all the numbers and all the case studies back it up. Our mission here is to make SMS your number one revenue channel. And though that may sound pretty lofty, we've seen brands do it and it will continue to become more and more common in the coming years. So if you want to maximize SMS as a revenue channel and you want to chase the idea of having it be your number one revenue stream, we're the only partner for you. So, Let's get to it and talk a bit about the SMS subscriber lifecycle. So as we've been reflecting and learning over the past years uh, and reflecting on what SMS means to you as merchants and how you engage with your customers, it became clear that SMS aligns really well with the standard customer lifecycle. So quickly taking a step back and thinking about your SMS program as a lifecycle aimed at maximizing revenue and LTV, we see it in four phases. First is acquisition, right? We start here where you've driven people to your website, to your social properties and so on. And once there, you want them to sign up as a subscriber so you can continue communicating with them in an own channel. Acquisition can be done through tools such as pop-ups, keywords, Shopify checkout extensions, right? You can even begin capturing zero party data to lay the groundwork for those personalized text messages to come. And this is an incredibly important part of the overall SMS strategy as acquisition is the fuel that powers your overall SMS program. We've got a bunch of cool product updates aimed at this. Now, the second stage of, stage of the journey is engagement, right? Once a person's subscribed, engagement can start. And this means that you've earned the right to communicate with this human on the other end of their phone. They've opted into your brand's text messages. Now, what you don't want to do here is you don't want to just keep using SMS as a discount cannon, sending discount after discount after discount. You want to send personalized and contextualized messages, continue earning the opt-in and their attention. This can happen through a variety of ways, like an automated welcome series, a segment-specific campaign, or even just a general brand or community conversation. Now, this can also happen in a much more personal and one-to-one -one manner, like via our SMS sales offering or via our responses integrations. 
But in the end, this stage is all about building a relationship with subscribers. And at a certain point, we move on, right? We move on from engagement to trying to drive a conversion for the purchase phase. This can happen during one of those one-to-many SMS messages, or it can happen in a one-to-one -one fashion where a human is brought into the combo. And when we think about the convert phase, it's all about maximizing the revenue that SMS is driving for your brand. So we think a lot, we think a lot about how to help you make more sales because of our mission, right? Make SMS the number one revenue channel. And what that means is working with you to identify the right campaigns and automations to run. And if appropriate, when to bring in a human to drive that sale and to help close it. Now, once the purchase occurs, we move on to the retain phase. SMS plays a key role here because there's absolutely life beyond the first sale. So often this starts with a feature like transactional messaging. So the customer knows when to expect their package. Then maybe encouraging a happy customer to a review platform like Okendo, or maybe if someone has a question or complaint, engaging with them via one-on-one, -on -one, either inside a Postscript or via our connection with help desks like Gorgeous or Zendesk. But ultimately, right, this is about continuing the life cycle and nurturing those really important repeat purchases. We want to make sure that you and your team are enabled to deliver an excellent experience once the purchase has been made. So you can start that engagement cycle all over again. And in the end, SMS, AKA sell more stuff. So when I told you we're serious about SMS, it's all we're focused on, right? I really meant it, but let's be real. Anyone can put up a framework or graphic like this on a screen. So I want to put my money where my mouth is. And for the next section, I'm going to bring in Sid and Rally right, who I introduced earlier to talk about the features and products we've released and how they support each stage of this life cycle. So with that, I want to welcome to the stage and hand the mic to Sid Pathella, who you met or who I introduced a couple minutes ago. We'll have Sid jump up here and we'll have him take it away. Hey, Sid. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. Uh, just to recap, I'm Sid. I'm the product manager overseeing the uh, acquisition products here at Postscript. And I'm super excited to be talking to you all today about subscriber acquisition and some of our most recent releases. As Bellard just mentioned, subscriber acquisition is the first part in the subscriber lifecycle. So let's dive into how Postscript can help you acquire subscribers. We have a variety of acquisition tools for you to use, some of which are highlighted on the slide that you see here, ranging from website pop-ups to QR codes to Shopify checkout extensions. We recommend testing all of these tactics against each other over time and across segments to find what works best for your brand. Make it your goal to find repeatable tactics that fit best into your broader marketing strategy and that leads to the best subscriber LTV to CAC. That's lifetime value to customer acquisition cost. For instance, pop-ups are generally the main driver of subscriber acquisition for brands, but there are situations where the other tools can really supplement your marketing strategy. For example, consider using QR codes for in-person events or on shipping containers links to landing pages on social media, and checkout extensions on your site's checkout flow. Last, but definitely not least, I want to call out one hidden aspect of our acquisition tool that you're going to love. As part of our mission to help you grow your subscriber lists and make SMS your number one revenue channel, we also want to make sure we save you money and headaches. And to do this, we make compliance a top priority. That means seamless compliance guardrails are built into our product and we provide proactive updates whenever there are compliance changes. So with Postscript, you can feel good about a healthy and compliant subscriber list. With all that in mind, let's take a look now at some of our most recent acquisition releases. Our first big release this year was Custom Property Collection. This lets you enrich your subscriber data with additional consumer provided information, known as zero party data, which Beller also called out earlier, along with their contact info. This is critical for providing more personalized and value-added experiences. Imagine with me for a moment all of the information you could collect about your subscribers' preferences, like their shoe size, their favorite color, their, perf their preferred communication language, and more. Right off the bat, this lets your potential customers know that you care about their preferences and will tailor your SMS marketing around them. You can accomplish that with Postscript by creating segments or automation branches based on these custom property answers allowing you to deliver more personalized and engaging experience later in the customer lifecycle, leading to higher order conversions and revenue. Sticking with custom property collection uh, for a moment, our latest enhancement there is the ability to collect data information. 
This lets you collect any date you want, like a subscriber's birthday, their wedding anniversary, or any special occasion to drive more personalized conversations with them in the future. More on that shortly. All right, let's shift gears slightly now and talk about data collection and email service providers, also known as ESPs. While we believe and know that SMS can be a merchant's number one revenue channel, we're also not naive to the fact that SMS must tie into your broader marketing strategy, which also includes email. And with that in mind, we wanna make sure we integrate as seamlessly as possible into your marketing tech stack, specifically with those ESPs, which is why I'm happy to share that we recently launched some enhancements to our Clayview integration, as well as a number of new integrations with other ESPs, ListTrack, Cordial, and MailChimp, who support some of the largest Shopify brands. With these enhancements, emails and custom properties collected through your PostScript pop-ups can be automatically forwarded to these ESPs, making it easier to align your data across platforms. Furthermore, you can map different PostScript pop-ups to different ESP lists to tailor both your SMS and email marketing experiences. One really powerful example of this is running an A-B test with our pop-ups and sending the emails from different A-B test variants to their own ESP lists. Pretty cool, right? Now, last but certainly not least, I'd love to talk about Shopify checkout extensions. This is a new feature from Shopify and we're the first SMS marketing platform to launch with it. For some context, Shopify recently announced that they're deprecating checkout.liquid in 2024. Checkout extensions are the evolution of the dot liquid checkout pages for Shopify Plus merchants. They let you customize your checkout flow by inserting the subscriber acquisition widgets that you see on the screen wherever you want in your checkout flow. I'd love to highlight two great things though about our checkout extension in particular. First, they're super seamless. They let a subscriber know if they're already subscribed to your SMS program, which is great for the subscriber, but also eliminates the headache of duplicates in your system. Second, and this is my personal favorite part about checkout extensions, is that you can also add them to your Shop Pay Express checkout, boosting your acquisition rate no matter how your customer choose, chooses uh, to complete their purchase. All right, that's it for subscriber acquisition. Let's spend a couple of minutes now to talk about a recent improvement to the next part of the subscriber lifecycle, Engage. If you'll recall, I spoke earlier about collecting data information from your subscribers and using that information to create more meaningful, personalized conversations with them. Well, we've made that super easy to do in our flow builder, which now allows you to trigger an automation on dates that you've collected. So for example, you can set up birthday collection once in your pop-ups and then have a single automation that runs every single day to seamlessly pull in subscribers with a birthday on that day into an automation. Next, another recent release to Flow Builder that I'd like to highlight is approximate matching. In order, to stay, in order to stay conversational, it's important that typos don't get in the way of responding effectively to subscribers. We, we are all susceptible to typos every once in a while, and this release helps to eliminate the effects of those typos on your conversations within Flow Builder. In this example on the screen, you can see how various permutations of the word yes, some of which could be seen as typos, are understood and allow the flow to continue as a customer might expect. Also new in Flow Builder is our add to flow action. You can use this tool to reroute subscribers from one automation to another one in order to manage flows more efficiently and effectively. For example, you might have a flow set to trigger when a subscriber's order is delivered and you wanna send them a message asking about their experience or offer a helping hand. You might also have a few other flows similar to this where you wanna provide support in thread. With this release, instead of recreating that support section of your flows multiple times over, you can create it once and use the add to flow action to funnel all subscriber support requests from your other flows into that single support flow. And within that support flow, you'll be able to see every linked flow that subscribers, that subscribers come in from so you don't lose track of those connections. All right, everyone, it's been a pleasure. That's it for me. Thank you so much for your time walking through this. I'm gonna hand it over to Rally now, who's gonna to talk to you about the next step in the subscriber lifecycle convert. Over to you, Rally. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Rally, Senior Product Marketer here at PostScript. And let's get into the most important part of the life cycle, converting your subscribers. So earlier this year, we launched SMS Sales. If you missed the announcement, SMS Sales is a premium service offering where we pair a team of expertly trained sales associates with purpose-built software 
to double your SMS revenue. So how does it work exactly? We've opened up what we call the e-commerce sales center in Phoenix, where we staff and train sales teams on behalf of brands. When we hire folks, we train them on two things. The first, everything about your brand. It's so important that a salesperson can speak in the voice of your brand. They can speak to your products and they can handle the objections that your buyers have. And we do this through an extensive onboarding process. The second thing we train them on is how to be great salespeople via SMS. We even group them around similar products so they can share learnings. And finally, our sales associates are incentivized to drive more sales. So you're getting a team of highly trained, highly motivated salespeople with seven days a week coverage without actually having to hire and train them yourself. But our associates could not be as effective at converting if they didn't have the right tools and data at their fingertips. We've built the, e the only e-commerce sales product that allows our associates to prioritize conversations in the inbox and proactively reach out to subscribers based on where they are in their customer journey. They're not just waiting for a text to come in. Using a combination of automated campaigns and segmentation, we're driving 14 times more conversations with subscribers than what brands will typically see on their own. And this is a very different approach from just using a help desk software to answer support tickets. The software is what allows them to have real-time conversations with shoppers that doesn't use a chat bot. It doesn't depend on the shopper staying on your site to keep a live chat window open. And they get a response back in minutes, not hours or days. Inside the sales software, the associates can see a detailed subscriber profile, including Shopify purchase history, browsing history, what flows they've previously interacted with, and any additional custom, any additional custom properties that you've been uh, collecting. And we use all of this data to personalize conversations and create the most compelling offers. We truly believe that in an e-commerce market that's more competitive than ever, being able to offer a unique shopping experience will play a huge role in winning over new customers. And today I wanna to peel back the curtain a bit and show you what a real SMS sales conversation looks like and share the results that we've been seeing with the brands in our beta. So this is a real conversation for uh, one of our customers called The Ridge. They sell wallets, rings, and other premium accessories. The subscriber here signed up to the SMS list, but they didn't end up converting. So uh, normally after the welcome series, they would just get routed to the normal marketing campaigns. But in this case, our sales associate, Casey, stepped in and asked, hey, what are you shopping for today? Can I help you? This kicked off a conversation with a subscriber where they asked, what is the difference between these two types of metals? I'm shopping for my fiance, they work with their hands. So now we've learned that this person was hesitating to buy because they didn't know which was the right product for them. And Casey, having been extensively trained on the Ridge's products, is able to write back with a very informative and personal response. The subscriber next asks, which one is more scratch resistant, which one is more uh, will break easier in case it continues to educate them on the products. After a bit more back and forth like this, the subscriber now feels confident in their purchase decision. Remember, they went from not purchasing because they had a lot of unanswered questions about the product to now being ready to buy. So Casey asks if they're ready to order today and here the subscriber responds that they're gonna order next week. Now, this is another crucial moment where we might lose this first time customer. So Casey adds an additional incentive of 15% off if they were to make the purchase today. The subscriber is super happy to get a deal. And so they ask for some help checking out. Casey then not only sends them the unique discount code, but also a link to a pre-filled card with exactly the products that they wanted to buy. The subscriber makes their first purchase and writes back to say how amazing the service was. This is very likely someone who never would have texted the brand on their own to ask for help. And it's a very common example of how we're driving incremental conver conversions with SMS sales. The brands that are currently in our beta are seeing a significant increase in revenue, anywhere from five to 20% lift in GMV. And this is because of what you just saw. We are addressing the customer's common buying objections and helping to educate them so they can make the best purchase decisions. And there's other benefits to SMS sales. You'll offer a completely unique and memorable shopping experience that I can guarantee none of your competitors are doing. And you'll be able to offer a better service without hiring more people on your team. The SMS sales team works in tandem with your existing support team to route conversations to the right place.
And lastly, something that's been pleasantly surprising for a lot of our beta customers is they're getting a ton of customer insights out of these conversations. They're learning about customer preferences, motivations, product requests, and more. So let's look at the numbers. For all the brands that join our SMS sales program, we run a 90 day AB test where some of their new subscribers will only receive the normal marketing campaigns while the rest are added to the SMS sales segment. We do this so we can measure the real incremental impact of having SMS sales compared to only doing SMS marketing. The brands in our beta started out with an average of 23.5% conversion rate in the first seven days after signup. After just a few weeks, what we're seeing in the SMS sales group is a 31% increase of that conversion rate. This lift in conversions is making a huge impact on their business. Some of these brands are in highly competitive industries, and this is just game changing for them. Spots to join SMS sales before Black Friday, Cyber Monday are very limited. So now is the time to talk to our team if this is something that you're ready to invest in. And of course, the subscriber lifecycle doesn't end after the first purchase. Retaining your customers is how you build a long lasting brand. Earlier this year, Twilio released their state of personalization report. And in it, they indicated that 56% of consumers will become repeat buyers after a personalized experience. So if you wanna win over your customers' hearts and wallets, getting personal is the way to go. Postscript has a ton of features that make it easy to personalize your conversations, especially inside Flow Builder. Sid mentioned our new add to flow action a few minutes ago, but these features are incredibly versatile and can be applied to many different use cases. For example, here we've got the same post purchase flow using the order delivered trigger, but we're including another add to flow action in the B column to move subscribers into a personal product recommendation flow after purchase. Filtering your subscribers into flows based on their shopping history allows them to feel like their interactions that they're having with your brand are meaningful to them and they're valuable. And this will keep them coming back for more. Another way to keep your brand top of mind is by finding additional touch points that customers will appreciate. And one of the easiest yet very underused ways to do this is through transactional messaging. From a customer's perspective, receiving their order is the most exciting part. And with transactional messaging, you can text them updates on their order status and link to tracking information. What's unique about transactional messaging is that you can enable these texts for your for the people that have subscribed to your marketing list, but you can also enable transactional messaging for non-marketing subscribers. So what this means is that customers at checkout can opt in to receive transactional messages only. So these are messages that are order related and they cannot include any additional like marketing type of language. But the, uh, the benefit of this is it's a bit of a foot in the door technique since your transactional subscribers can convert to marketing subscribers through any of your existing opt-in channels. And they're already getting texts from your brand. They're already building that relationships. So they're very likely to convert into marketing subscribers. And this allows you to begin that life cycle all over again. To enable transactional messaging for non-marketing subscribers, get in touch with your CSM at Postscript and they can help you set it up. Lastly, we've added several new integrations to our lineup to continue supporting the subscriber retention. Subscriptions are one of the best ways to drive loyalty, and we've added two new integrations, Skio and Stay AI, that make subscription management easier, and they enable a ton of new use cases for building SMS flows. We've also added Revo, a loyalty and reviews platform that allows you to personalize your SMS flows based on custom properties that they collect. And with that, I'll pass it back to Beller. Thanks, Rally. Appreciate all the sharing. Okay, everyone. So uh, that was a ton of great stuff from a product organization. And as always, they are very focused on just continually releasing more features with the mission of making SMS your number one revenue channel. And again, all the features we've released today and highlighted tie back to and support this SMS subscriber lifecycle. And that's because we truly believe that if you think about SMS in this way, you will not only make more money via the channel, but you'll also deliver more value to your customers. Okay, so got through all that. And now we get to the part of this webinar I'm so excited for, where I get to follow through on our big surprise. Now at PostScript, we've had a ton going on recently. We just launched our second product, SMS Sales, back in May. And now I'm super proud to announce that PostScript is not just a two product company, but a three product company. Because we have officially acquired Fondue. 
Fundu is another amazing company focused on e-commerce merchants on Shopify. So some of you may be familiar, some maybe not. So some of you may be wondering, what is Fundu? Well, Fundu is on a mission to help merchants make more money more efficiently. Sounds pretty familiar to what we do, right? And they do it with a smart coupon alternative called Cashback. So I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about Fondue with the help of my good friend, Oren Charnoff, the co-founder and CEO of Fondue. Oren's going to jump on and he's going to explain what Fondue does and explain how Cashback works. And then I'll come back on and share how Cashback and SMS are a great match for one another. Finally, we're going to close this off with a unique promotion that we're running this quarter. You do not want to miss it. So hang tight. We'll get going. Oren, why don't you come take it from here and explain what Fondue is all about? In fact, folks, Oren is live at the Grow Conference in New York. They're just uh, hyping up, getting tons of questions and engagement around this news that we announced today. Yeah, yeah. I am not I am being not held hostage here in a utility closet. It's just the only place I could find that's quiet in order to be joining this webinar. I am so freaking excited about this incredible new chapter. We're only just beginning here now that Fondue is a PostScript company. Um, so at a high level, for those folks who don't know Fondue, more specifically Cashback, is Cashback exists to introduce a more profitable and higher converting alternative than coupon codes. The way that we do that is with a Cashback solution. Cashback works where shoppers pay full price, knowing they're eligible post-purchase to claim their discount. And this leads to a strictly more profitable and even more compelling discount offer for shoppers. So the way, that, the way that brands build trust in deciding to use cashback is they most often conduct an A-B test on their pop-up and welcome series. This is an incredible place with tools like PostScript in order to do just that. And the results that brands are seeing is, it has been incredible. Cashback and Fondue is a relatively young company, but some of the results we've seen for brands from True Classic Tees to Barstool Sports and to Obvi and many other D2C darlings is brands we typically target 30% list growth, meaning cashback discount offers on that pop-up will lead to 30% more subscribers than the traditional stale coupon code. We also see because of a bigger list and cashback is a full price purchase that you therefore generate more revenue from that welcome series, be it SMS or email. And then lastly, we'll get through the mechanics, but cashback typically provides you know, we could hit that 5% contribution margin boost as well. Um, and look, discounts are an incredibly important part of commerce and coupon codes can be effective, but no one's really looked to rebuild discounts from the ground up. And not only is this providing value for brands, but shoppers love it too. With cashback, shoppers get to choose the incentive that's best for them and typically will get more value if they choose to claim their discount. And Let's firstly just speak about where coupons exist. And the answer is everywhere. Ads, influencers, affiliates, on-site, and in retention marketing. And there's so many different types of coupon codes. Buy one, get one, free gift with purchase. And we've done a lot of data on pop-up and welcome series. We see about 75% of pop-ups and welcome series offers are percentage-based discounts. So that's really what we're primarily focused on, is how do we introduce a more compelling alternative than that stale percentage-based coupon code. And the challenge with coupon codes is they are flawless technology at helping brands let, make less profit every time guaranteed. When that coupon code is applied or injected, brands will make less margin, always. And brands don't often know how much money they're losing to coupon codes. It's actually quite often, it's happening unnecessarily. So let's take a shopper's journey, for example. They see a compelling influencer who says that this scented candle is incredible. It's organically sourced, it smells great, and it's 10% off. Now, does that shopper care to say 10% on an $80 scented candle, as opposed to buying it for $8 on an Amazon marketplace from a substitute, probably inferior uh, uh, brand on the Amazon space? No, because if they're price sensitive, they're not buying D2C. Generally, what we find is D2C brands, Shopify brands, these shoppers are brand first and price second. But the shoppers want that dopamine hit of you know, getting a great deal, even if they're not price sensitive. And coupon codes have no idea how to understand who's motivated by that price and who's not. So with cashback, the shoppers get to choose the incentive that's best for them 
if at all, a strictly smarter alternative than coupon codes. And the way that cashback works, and then we'll materialize it with some math, is that shoppers pay full price for their product, and post-purchase, they have the opportunity to claim that discount. They either claim it as cash or at a greater value as site credit. And this can displace coupon codes wherever they're used. Like we said, ads, influencers, and affiliates, but where nearly every brand begins is that pop-up and welcome series. And that's where we got to build a great relationship with Postscript, who's a leader in that space. So when shoppers claim their cash back, they have that choice. They may not claim it, and then if they do claim it, in what way do they want it? So when you take a look at uh, a coupon code, someone just walked into the utility closet. When you take a look at the coupon code, when the shopper applies that coupon code, you will always lose profit margin every single time. But with cashback, about half the shoppers will never claim the discount. About 20% will take it as a site credit, and only 30% will take it as cash. So it only costs the brand 30 cents on the dollar. They get more LTV because of the site credit, and they get more contribution margin because of that full price purchase when it's never claimed. And this ties in directly with the core mission, we'll bring Beller back in, on how do you make the SMS space the most profitable and highest revenue channel for brands. And we're super excited uh, of what already the overlap has been from before the deal and now that we're officially a Postscript company. And this is only the beginning. Thanks, Oren. Uh, really appreciate you sharing and uh, go get them at that conference, huh? Um, you can leave the utility closet now. I hope your time in there was well served. Uh, so folks, as a reminder, right, this is our mission, make SMS the number one channel for brands, for e-commerce merchants. And we think about this all day, every day. And so as you saw above, Fondue helps you make more money more efficiently. And while it's true that Fondue does fit into more places than just SMS and cash back fits into more places with just SMS, we saw such an overlap in the value that we deliver to customers that it was an easy yes to bring Orin and crew into Postscript. We're super excited to have them. But one thing that really drove urgency for us to make this happen is taking a look at where we're at as an industry, right? This isn't 2019, this isn't 2020, right? E-commerce was easier and it was very growth focused. The macro environment today has gotten dramatically harder. And merchants need to be thinking about not just top line revenue growth, but margins, efficiencies, overall running a smarter business. In fact, Shopify in their 2023 trends report said that 73% of Shopify plus brands reported their cash flow is constrained right now. That's a huge percentage. That's three out of four. That's the majority of us. And that's why this idea of driving more revenue more, efficient, more efficiently is exactly why we made the deal to purchase Fondue and exactly why Fondue and Postscript make so much sense together. Because yes, revenue growth is always going to be a huge focus here at Postscript and also for you all. But we'd be remiss not to acknowledge, right, that efficiency has become much more important in the last 12 to 18 months. And so Fondue's ability to boost SMS's potential as a revenue generator and create more efficiencies from margin perspective is just an incredibly compelling proposition. And I wanted to dig into it with you a little bit more. So we're gonna take a look back at this SMS subscriber lifecycle, right? And say, how exactly does Fondue and SMS play together? So the, again, the stages of this channel, right, are acquire, building the list, engaging, communicating and building relationships, converting, right, driving to and earning that sale, and then retaining, right, making sure that you deliver positive and meaningful experiences, they keep buying. So we're going to go through each of these and show how Fondue improves the performance of each. So first on the acquire stage, right, cashback and Fondue start at this first touch you will probably want to swap out that 10% discount for 15 or 20% cash back offer on your pop-up and welcome series. You'll see a huge lift in uh, the number of subscribers coming in without sacrificing margin or bottom line. In fact, margin will improve, right? Most brands doing this see an average of a 31% lift in list growth on SMS. And once you see work with our team, see a positive result on an AV test, turning on those cash back offers for 100% of your traffic can be really impactful. Next stage is engaging, right? Once you have more subscribers, you wanna keep inserting those more enticing cashback offers. This can be through automations, one-off sends, drip campaigns. Drip campaigns, by the way, super powerful thing that's only available on Postscript, no other provider has them. And 
what you're going for, right, is increased engagement. And we're seeing just that with the early results with Fondue. We're seeing customers have substantially higher click-through rates with cashback offers versus discount offers. Next is convert, right? Getting that all important sale. And when using Fondue's cashback and welcome series offer, merchants are seeing a 37% increase on average in revenue from their welcome series. That's extremely meaningful, right? Remember the how is in the fact that the greater incentive we can provide thanks to Fondue and Cashback's economic efficiencies that Orrin walked us through a few minutes ago. Cashback is another great lever you can use in our SMS sales offering as well, especially if your brand isn't inclined to do discounts. And finally, the subscriber lifecycle is about much more than just the first sale. It's about using SMS to as a retention channel that creates loyal customers over time. And we see that with Cashback. For those 20% of shoppers that choose a store gift card instead of getting a Visa debit card, when they come back and make that repeat purchase, not only are they buying with a gift card, but on average, they spend 2.5x the face value of that gift card. That means that if they get $10 in cashback store credit, the average shopper is spending 25 on the next order. So instead of taking that discount up front, you've driven multiple purchases, one at full price, the second one at a little bit of a discount because of the cashback mechanism. Right? It's really easy to see why Orin and the Fondue team are seeing such a substantial LTV boost in their A-B tests. So looking at what the SMS subscriber lifecycle looks like when you utilize cashback, increase in SMS signups, larger click-through rate at the engagement stage, an increase in revenue on your welcome series, and an increase in customer LTV. That's extremely meaningful. And with all of that, it adds up to an average of a 3% gain in margin that can touch upward of 5% we've seen. That's extremely meaningful. So we've walked you through today this big idea of SMS subscriber lifecycle. We've shared a bunch of our new product updates and made recommendations about how they, they support each stage of the lifecycle. And then we made our announcement around Fondue. And we talked about how cashback can work within the subscriber lifecycle to boost your SMS results. And so I want to leave you with two things, a promotion and an invitation. First, we're so excited about Fondue and Cashback. We want to make it as easy as possible for all of you to beat your revenue goals on Black Friday that we decided to run a little promotion of our own. So if you're currently a PostScript customer and you add Fondue to your overall SMS revenue platform, you'll get 10% off your minimum spend for each month that you have the Cashback offer live in your welcome series. I'll let that sink in. Here's what that means. If your minimum monthly commitment on PostScript is $2,000 and you add Fondue in and utilize it across your welcome series traffic, you'll get $200 off your spend each month for the duration of your contract. If, it's, if your minimum spend is $5,000 a month, it'd be $500 off your spend each month. Now, if you're not an actual PostScript customer today, you can get in on this action by signing up with us and with Fondue. A couple of details here. This offer is valid through the end of September. We want to make sure that people have enough time to get up and running before Black Friday. And you must be on a contract with PostScript. So you want to talk with someone on our team to figure out how you become eligible. But reach out, right? There's a ton of upside with Fondue. And we think the combination of PostScript SMS marketing and cashback will set everyone here up for a great Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And last but not least, if you have more questions about cashback or Fondue, we have a webinar coming up dedicated to it on July 27th. Believe it or not, right, Fondue works with platforms outside of PostScript. It works on email. It works anywhere you use a discount. And so Orin is going to lead us through all the different ways you can use Fondue. It's going to dig into the mechanics of cash back. He's going to talk about how you can optimize your discounting approach to save those contribution dollars and grow your list faster. So if you want to join us to keep learning more, navigate over to the resources section and you'll find a link to sign up for that as it will be full of lots of actionable information. Otherwise, that's all the content we have. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Really appreciate you coming. I hope that you're as excited as us about this new era in PostScript, and we'll follow up shortly with the recording and the recap of the webinar. Thanks so much, everyone.